collectively on occasion to give God some, uh, an, an opportunity to hear our cry. Isn't it great how many of us have different things on our mind, different thing, problems in our life, but we can all come together in prayer. And no matter what you're requesting, what the next person in the next house is requesting, God is receiving all of that. And he can answer all of that with just a word. So we are so thankful to the Lord tonight for you being here. And we're going to move right in with uh, our theme for the next couple of sessions that we have. I, I was when I was out of town, I began to read uh, a very familiar set of rules, set of laws that we have uh, been given by God. He started off in Exodus and the other chapters that he speaks to it as well, Deuteronomy, but it deals with the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments. And when we think about how God uh, continues to bless uh, us through his word and how he's given us the instructions that he's given and how he even put these commandments together to the people of God as they were exiting or as they left the, uh, the bondage of uh, the Egyptians. And sometimes when you get out there on your own, you forget all about uh, being uh, under someone's rule, but we are always under the rule of the Lord. So he, he lays these commandments out and we're gonna talk um, for the next few sessions uh, in regards to the 10 commandments. So we welcome each and every one of those that are visiting for the first time, maybe or those that are returning, uh, have not been with us for a while. We say, God bless you in Jesus name. We hope that you are still working on your scripture for the month. Uh, that scripture has been with us. Uh, what this is the 20, what day is this? 23rd, 24th, what day is this? Come on, y'all, y'all know y'all days of the month. Um, we want to make sure that we, 23rd, 22nd, 23rd, which one is 23rd. it? 23rd. 23rd, okay. Hey, was this 28 days in this month? It's not a leap year. So time is running out. And from the center of who you are, don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. So we want to get that in our spirit. and. Um, put it in your hearts we are thankful before we get started anybody anyone uh, i feel somebody got a testimony somebody out there got a praise somebody to to uh share it i'm not saying write the book i'm just saying hit it and quit it but anybody that has a, a testimony of praise for the lord you can do it at this time okay Praise the Lord, everyone. Okay. I just, <laughs> I just want to thank and praise the Lord um, for taking us safely over the dangerous highways and byways all the way to Georgia and bringing us back home. Our home was found in order. And I just thank and praise the Lord for the fellowship that we've had with the family. Hadn't traveled in about two years, but um, the Lord made a way and we feel good in our bodies, so I just thank and praise the Lord for even his protection um, as we travel. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to say the same thing. The body's good, Mon. The body's good. So we're thankful for that. And uh, as you stated, we had a great time uh, seeing family that we had not seen. Um, we're um, looking at uh, Exodus 20. Um, and um, let's uh, somebody read this Exodus 20. What is it? 26 verses, I believe. Let's let's go through that. Someone read for us. Sister Lynette, where are you at? Stop hiding. Sister Lynette, read for me. Let's make this a duel. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God which had brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. 
For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the I don't see burst. I don't see the rest of that. Hold on. I can pull it up. To the third and fourth generation. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that loved me. Hmm? You didn't finish. I know I didn't I didn't see it. I thought you finished it. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy servant man, nor thy servant maid, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, speak thou with us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, fear not. For God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me and shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen. And all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewed stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shall thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. Praise him. Amen to the reading of his word. So um, when we really think about things and look at the basis for uh, what's a good word morality um we can be sure of one thing that um there's a right and a wrong and the world offers us various opinions when we think about it when we look at the world today and where we're living 
and we can even see uh, the events that have transpired in the last few days, few hours, how uh, one person, one uh, ruler views things and how he or she goes in and she takes what she wants or she says what they want. So taking what a person wants, taking what a person is saying, uh, taking what a person is doing and believing what a person wants, it that all uh, is in the ear and the eyes of the beholder. Um, the results, as you can see, even like I stated earlier, what's happening in our world today, it could be tragic. We, we um, could be very close to what many don't want. We don't want war. We don't, that's, we want to love one another. We want to be able to uh, go ahead and, and converse with our neighbors and to live peaceably on, on earth. But that's not always going to happen. There's going to be always diff differences because of who we are and how people view things and the viewpoints uh, sometimes clash with what you believe. We did it here in this nation for four years prior where we had a leader that uh, subject, subjected us to a lot of, and he called it fake news, but the fake news was coming from him. A lot of uh, disruption. Uh, we are seeing even more so today uh, the disconnect with our, our fellow Americans, if we want to say the United States have talked about this before, where it is not as uh, peaceful as it should be or could be. And so even in the midst of all that, all the storms, we can see that the results of all that brings about some crazy stuff, brings about lawlessness, it brings about drugs, it brings about alcohol, it brings about abuse and violence, it just continues to bring about things that are dangerous and taking us out. Murder is on the uprise. You can't ride in your car without someone trying to hijack you, take your car. Can't go inside of a gas station to pay your bill without somebody trying to steal your car. Things are happening in communities. People go to bed at night, wake up, their car is either, either stolen or gone, and we can't do anything but uh, um, uh, call the popo. And in our community, in the area that we live in, more people are reporting car thefts and uh, people are walking around their community that they don't know, have never seen. Fear is on the uprise. And so, so many things are happening at times like this. The problem when we see that it is sin, sin has brought about an insurmountable amount of problems to us in this world. And we are now dealing with it, but God has given us some instructions. He's given us some commandments that we must live by and must walk by. And he opens up, this is what I love about him, because he opens up these commandments of the scripture that he deals with. It. After he brought them out of Egypt, he brings up the big point up that who he is, he is the Lord. He talks to them distinctly in, in the first three verses, more or less letting it be known, uh, letting it be known that he is the one God. And that's one thing that we have to hold on to that we have a God that cares about us. If we recognize him as being number one, that we don't bring about false gods and other images before him, that we praise him, worship him, give him all the glory. It's important for us to move in a direction. This is what he's telling the children of Israel. After they had gone through all the stuff that they've gone through, all the headaches, 400 plus, whatever years in captivity under the hard taskmaster, someone telling them every day what to do, what to eat, telling them that they can't have children, can't have male children, telling them all kinds of things. And now they are free. How many know it's great to be free? But even in freedom, we can act crazy because we'll forget who got us out of our freedom. I mean, out of our slavery, out of our confinement. We forget all about that. But God, he put things in order to help them, to keep their mind stayed on him, letting them know that I'm the one. I got you out of Israel. I'm the one, I mean, out of Egypt. I'm the one that brought you to this point. I'm the one that's going to help you go further. I'm the one that's laying out some common rules as you go through them that things, just like we're talking about with COVID, there's some simple things that we can do 
to be safe. We can continue to wash our hands. We can continue to have safe distance. He gives us these simple principles. I call them simple because it's not thou shall not. They are not hard. He makes it so plain for us to be able to obey him in the right manner. So we uh, definitely want to look at these things in a little bit more detail. And then you uh, time chime in as we talk about what God is trying to tell us in these last times, because there is a problem in this land right now. And we, if, uh, I joked about it many times about uh, a show that I watched um, was the uh, Jamie Foxx show and his uncle was depressed. And if you remember, I shared with you, if you haven't watched it, he, he uh, was having some problems and he, he went to church one day and, and while he was at church, he thought it was gonna lift him up and bring him to a point where he was gonna relieve himself of some of the issues that he had come about. He had problems with his wife, I call them a problem, but he had issues that they were going through. And so when he got back home, they saw the despair in him. They asked him, what's wrong? And he said that man began to preach and tell us about those commandments. And he said that he was breaking them on a daily basis. How many of us break the command? 10 of them. Now, there, there are more commandments in the Bible than this, but these 10 right here, get, get these right. <laughs> and others branch off of this but if we could get this right uh, we would be on the right road we would still be uh, lacking some things but he gives us these which would be springboarding us to uh, a, a life of uh, joy happiness peace brings us about to a point of salvation so he gives the children of israel this to give them their marching orders their walking papers the things that will help them as they go to the promised land how many know that there's some promises out there for you how many know that god's got something in store for you but you have to follow the instructions you have to follow i'm just telling you how to bake the cake that's what he's saying i got 10 things to put in this restaurant recipe for you and all you got to do is put a little like my grandfather said, put teapoon to a teapoon of this and that and a dab of that into your recipe and you'll find that you'll be successful. Give God to pray, acknowledge him as who he is. He is the only one that can bring us through all the troubles that we have. And if we put him first in our life, that's what he's talking about. And that's what unity does. Unity says, let's bring it all. I'm one God, I am he, I'm the one that brought you out. And when we get that in our mindset and in our spirit, we'll find ourselves walking a, a, a life of joy, joy, happiness, peace. And we don't have to worry about some of the world, world issues that are out there in the sense that some of the things we can't do nothing about, they're going to be there. But we can live in a life, in this life, in this world uh, with a, a mindset that God's got it. And that takes faith. And you don't get that unless you put on the whole arm and put on everything that God gives you. So the 10 commandments, uh, anybody, uh, what have, what, how do you, how do you view these, these 10, 10 verses? They were, uh, she was read 26, but they were within the 26 uh, verses that she read were the 10, 10 commandments. Talk to me, somebody. What about these, these basic 10 commandments that have been set they set them in stone. And even the children, of it, when he came down off the mount, you remember, Mo, he's so upset, he broke them, right? And they, they, that's why we have the second law. But this is what. So what, what do you get? Talk to me, somebody, about these Ten Commandments. Well, I got out of that, they, uh, that God was going to lead them to the promised land. And once they're at the promised land, he wanted their behavior uh, to be in the right order because they was about to go in the promised land and he wanted to make sure none of these things that, uh, you know, that would hold him back from his will. Yeah, okay. To make yeah. them like distinct people. From the other. Making them distinct. Anyone else? Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off, sis. Did we lose connectivity? But she did say distinct. No, I said, I, uh -huh, go ahead. Uh -huh. I'm fine. I'm fine. Go ahead. No, no, I, I didn't want to cut you off. I know we had lost connectivity for a period we did anyhow. But in that first verse, he says, and God spake these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land yeah. of Egypt, out of the house of. He said, I did that. 
I'm setting order. I'm letting you know who put you, got you on the other side of the river, who allowed and you to walk. You and what, don't you what? And don't forget it. And don't you forget who did that, who opened up that Red Sea. First, I got you out of the, out of the bondage that you were in. And then when your back was against the wall, I got you across on dry ground and you got a chance to turn around to see what I did to your enemy. God said it. And then he tells them what? That thou shalt have no other God, little g, before me. That means there was nothing else out there. They, they couldn't come up with anything. There was no existence of any other God. He was letting them be, I, I am who I am. But remember when Moses was, he said, who do I tell him sent me? What did he tell him? So when he went to Pharaoh, tell him I am, I sent you. I am. I am. I am. I am whatever you need. I am the alpha and I am the omega. I'm the beginning and the end. When you go before anything, just let it be known. I am. So he did it. God did that. And he put us in a love. He, he said, I'm sovereign. I am the one that put you, brought you to this particular uh, place. And he was an, an eternal, an ex, an eternal existence. His, his whole, he was all, it was all encompassed around him. And he, he created the world and he gives the people the commandments that he's sharing with them right now. Anybody else? When you hear this word commandments, 10 commandments, what do you think of? Where does your mind go? And then does it do anything to you in a, I'm gonna say it this way, in a corrective way? Well, when, when I hear them, I think about it. We know the first five are um, with our relationship towards God. He's telling us, he's giving us commandments um, of how we should treat him, how we should act towards him. And then the um, from six through 10 is are the commandments of how we get along with mankind. Um, and so here the Lord, he laid out the law for us. And I mean, it's plain, it's, it's, it's simple. And, but for us, it's not always as simple as it's laid out. Because a lot of times we, we know right from wrong, but it's that spirit man against the flesh. And so, um, but here, again, are our commandments. And so I think also the Bible says, if you love God, you will keep his commandments. Okay. So uh, I will probably say the first four, I would look towards him, but the, the fifth or the other six, I would say it's towards man, but it, it, interpretations. That's you, right. That's right. Okay. Um, but it, it does put, go ahead, sir. No, I'm sorry, Pastor. Go ahead. Uh, no, I was just going to conclude with that part of it, and, but it does share with us in verses one through four that uh, he, no other gods uh, shall make no idols and that shall uh, not take the name of the Lord God in vain. And that we're supposed to remember this day that he set aside um, for uh, the Sabbath and how we're supposed to keep that day, how we're supposed to act in, in that day and time. And um, the, the, when he say how we act, it doesn't spell it out, but the children of Israel knew even, let's go back prior to their captivity. Uh, they were trained. They were taught. They were living a life that was far different. When they got in captivity, they even still tried to practice many of those things. But the taskmaster, he was stopping you. He wouldn't let you go to church on Sunday. He was stopping you. You had to build. And I'm giving you less to build with, but I want you to build my kingdom. That's this kingdom here on earth. But we do find how important it is for us when we follow the oneness of God. And we saw even going back, if you look at the Tower of Babel, it has nothing to do with this, but the Tower of Babel, what unity does, even if unity is being, uh, has an outside meaning. I mean, it didn't, what they were trying to do was not uh, meaningful because the, to build to heaven, uh, it wasn't going to work. They didn't have the material to do it, but the, the energy that they put in and trying to do it, we see what being unified. So when you come and you understand uh, the body of Christ and how God is now said, I am the number one. 
I am, this is everything draws towards me. And we come together, we can see ourselves going over and being successful in the promised land. Any, anyone else? Also, it causes us to examine ourselves. Mm -hmm. Maybe you won't. We okay some days. <laughs> you know, as we become believers, we think we all got together, but time shows who we really are. So it causes us to examine ourselves. Cause I don't break a couple of them two or three, <laughs> but we didn't stay that way. Right. We repented and made a U-turn, but it causes us to examine ourselves because we don't have it all together. You may think it. We causes us, like Paul said, let us examine ourselves. True statement, Elmer. <laughs> True statement. That uh, going back and, and revisiting uh, these commandments, which we don't, you remember it, as we grew up, and I know Sister Carolyn and still in that, and maybe our kids remember at way back, uh, this was uh, a part of um, the tools that we they had. You started the card clash, you were going to memorize the the Ten Commandments. You had uh, Sister Hyde was was very um, diligent in teaching, and you your your age might have gotten you out of that class, but before you walked out of that class, you knew these Ten Commandments too, and, and that was a mm -hmm. part of it. But so it, so it was it put in our hearts to do it, spirit for our kids to do it, and it was a reciting thing. So yes, anyone else? Go ahead. I think I hear Sister Carolyn. You were saying Amen, but anything else you had to say? Uh, Pastor, um, yes. you know, I'm going to come from somewhere else, but I, I, I'm with you on this. The Anytime you humans have to start to legislate, I won't say humans, anytime you have to legislate and start to write down laws and policies to get humans to do what they're supposed to do, it, it's a problem. Um, and you know, prior to all of the humans that existed prior to Moses, God working with Moses to get them out of Egypt, there was no written law, but people behaved some. <laughs> uh, Abraham didn't have a law. Uh, Seth didn't have a law. Noah didn't have a law, you know, and so on. Um, but there was just so just there was uh there were law breakers there, back then. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's 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 what I'm getting at. Okay, yes, all right. Uh -huh. And and so we tie that, for instance, uh, people not behaving in the United States. So it's Black History Month, right? Jim Crow policies, uh, even though there were there was racism built into some of the actual laws, but then civil rights legislation had to be crafted in order to get people to behave, you know, or, or to not necessarily get them to behave, but because they weren't behaving. And, and so my point is something that Sister Rosalind had just put in the chat about uh, commandments five through 10, sort of being like a moral compass and how humans should just from their hearts with compassion treat each other anyway. Something that Minister Morant said some years ago about when she did a lesson on neighbors and who were you, love your neighbor. It, and your neighbor's not just the person that's next to you, but it's the person that's gonna come after you. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's the person that's gonna take the space that you happen to be in right now, all of those things. And I thank the Lord, yes, for the commandments. I also thank the Lord for Jesus who came <laughs> And as was prophesied, going to put those commandments back on our hearts where it's supposed to be so we can operate as we should. Um, so I know I'm all over the place, but that that this is heavier than just to me than, than just following some rules. This is. I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. This is Old Testament, and but these rules or these commandments, as you stated, are what were implanted when the Holy Ghost fell. We're supposed to live. It's, it's in us now. It's a part of your life. Uh, but at that juncture, when he was bringing them out, when he wrote these things, they, he was just making it plain for the people of God that, that I am who I am and that there are things that they, because they broke these rules earlier. If you go back, Cain and Abel, what happened there? Kill your brother. Come on, you know, 
So, but they knew better than that. They, but they, but because of greed, because of whatever it is, those issues are still going to stand or going to be out there. People are going to try to take somebody's life. Everybody's not going to follow these rules. Elder just stated, and I laughed about it, that uh, I break one of these on a daily basis. How many of you say you shall not steal, but when you go to work, you don't call it stealing. I take that pen. I take that tablet. I take that from my job that I should, oh, that's not stealing daily. No, today I had to do an inventory sheet for the things that I'm willing to be turning in, not willing, that I need to turn in in a few weeks because I retire. And I went down, I said, well, the only thing you really own is the computer. I said, the monitors, all those things, I was given a, an allowance to buy office material. That's mine now. So they said, oh, yeah, no problem. But at the same token, I was bringing these things to light so that you say, well, where's that, that big monitor that you didn't send back, George? Well, that came out of the monthly allowance that I get to cover my office expense. So, it, it, you know, we were all on the same, but I was getting it. So they didn't say I was a thief. I didn't want to be, no, <laughs> that I didn't turn. But the, what I'm saying is the mindset of people, but we do take things that don't belong to us and we don't think it's as, and look at it as stealing. We do do things. We do look down the street and say, wow, not say we in the church, but people do admire or covet things that they don't have and that they want. Does it have to be written here? No, but it's in your heart, but you had to get it. So somewhere, maybe it did have to be written so that you could learn and that you don't follow the laws of the land today. We don't know all of those things in the Constitution, but there are things that we just know that aren't right. So, but I do agree with your, your principle there, but uh, he wrote it. He said it in the beginning, God said this, not man. He said it. So it was, it was, there's importance in it, but you're right. We should love our neighbors. That should be a con, but everybody don't love their neighbors. Look what we're doing today as a nation and fighting. I mean, not, we haven't began to fight yet, but look at the, the division within the countries, China, Russia, U.S., you keep naming them. We got issues. They are our neighbors, and we are uh, on the verge of showing how much of a neighbor we are. But um, so, anybody else? Good, good point, uh, though, Elder. Uh, piggyback on colonists. I heard a pastor said this. He said, "Colonists is saying I, I want a wife, but I want your wife." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, that's just like the little man that we talk about, the deacon that was in the church. Do you remember that one when the lady came in and she was got happy and the clothes fell off, right? And the preacher said, he said that the first one to lay eyes on that woman, uh, the Lord should strike him blind. And the deacon, y'all know what the deacon said. He covered one eye and said, I'll take a chance on one eye. So we... we we do take chances. We do things that are that we know aren't right. And, and even uh, our prayer is that we don't slip, even as saved individuals, that I don't get caught up in, 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 in think badly of my neighbor or what have you. But they are. It's in my heart. I don't remember all those off the bat. No. And there are more. This 10, you know, there's 600 and some odd commandments, right? Or more. If anybody starts counting, I, I read somewhere. Not, we know we're not going to be able to follow all those ordinances, but the Holy Ghost, come on, the Holy Ghost on the inside, it'll help you stay on the right road. And when you do fall, you get back up and you acknowledge you're falling or your, your slips and get things straight back with God. You know when you didn't talk to somebody, right? You know when you're being uh, uh, disobedient. Uh, you know when uh, things aren't the way that you can even make it easy for you say the uh, uh what would jesus do or what would you when you start asking questions like that and he start talking to you you, you know to get back on the right road but i understand what you're saying elder definitely do, do. Uh, uh, the law uh, many people hold to that by saying i'm not under the law anymore well uh check yourself you might not be on written but you know in your heart when you're doing something outside of um, you have those sins of omission and commission, you know, we, you'll get to it that, that we, we fall short at and uh, the Lord deals with us and you wonder why things aren't going well for you. 
when you take time out and he starts speaking to you, you say, mm, I knew that. But um, good point. Any, anybody else? Anyone, even what, what I said, if you wanted to elaborate or, or give your piece on it, feel free. I, I have something to say. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I, uh, Dr. Jones, I was, I was agreeing with Dr. Jones about the heart. Um, back in the day, they didn't have to write the commandments on the stones. It had to be written on the stones. But, you know, after the Holy Ghost comes, um, we could take it back. It had to be in our hearts. I say back in the day, they, they, they had to write commandments on the, you know, on the um, stone. It had to be, you know, they said they wrote, so the children and everybody else can remember these commandments. So after the Holy Ghost came, um, the Lord planted in our heart to do the right thing. Absolutely. That's, that's how I get. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, he did. Yeah. Is that? No. Yeah. You know, because, um, you know, back in the Old Testament, um, that's how they did, you know. They 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 writ they you know it was written on, in the stones, you know, the commandments and all. And then I look at it after the Holy Ghost comes, it should be in our heart to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I guess that's all we gotta keep praying, create me, oh God, a clean heart or mm -hmm. pure heart. Yeah. That that that's why they said that he would take away that stony heart and give a heart. Yeah. Yeah. Heart is pliable to the spirit, so the spirit can lead and guide us. Right. Yeah. No. All, all things are true. Um, and thanks, Sister Carolyn, and for for your input on that. It is in our heart, but even in our heart. Now I'll go back to it was written somewhere. That's wicked. <laughs> Pardon. I didn't hear you. I say desperately wicked above all. Yeah. On its own. Yeah. On its own. But that, that's how the intervening of the Holy Ghost. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and he knew he knows he knew what we were gonna need before he even he gave them to Moses to write down. He knew us and he knew so right. you could you can break the stone all you want, sticks and stones and break my bone. You can put them all where you want to, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you knew that That's you hard. committed a sin, that you that your heart wasn't right, that you looked down the street when you shouldn't have, or you sat in church when that lady's clothes fell off of, and you tried to get by with clothes and <laughs> stop clapping, Sister Carolyn, don't do that. <laughs> but we know, we know, we know now. So at this juncture, yeah, we can see it this way. But back then, look at Aiken. He sit there and he tried to steal a, a little piece of something when he told him, don't touch it. Don't bring nothing. Leave that idol. Leave everything behind. And he left and came with it and then came back to the Lord and said, somebody got something. <laughs> look what happened. It destroyed his whole family. Uh, but it, it, we definitely want to make sure we don't lose out. And we definitely want to make sure that it is in our heart, that it is imprinted on our, that we know that the Lord uh, has given us um, some leadway. But at the same time, he's given us instruction on how to live a holy life. And that's uh, the big piece for us today. For me, I know I'm trying to do all I can to make heaven. And when you say that, uh, glory, you are uh, you, you. You, you, well, you're seeking something. You're trying to, to make sure that you don't um, fall short of, of some of the things that, uh, especially when you know, because you know what I say, that bird, who, who holds that little poem? When that bird say, you show us ugly? Y'all know that one. <laughs> say, what? The bird, the bird said, if you say that one more time, I'm gonna kill you. The lady came out looking foxy. The bird, all he said was what? You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you know you're still ugly <laughs> i ain't gotta tell you some things you ain't got to tell but that that was, that was another joke anyway but yes these commandments uh they were written uh for time and now those same uh things that we have lived through all these years you don't nobody has to write uh on the red light that you can't run the red light you, you know it <laughs> is there it's in it's in your mind so we should have these things these things on how we live uh, and uh how we should want to live um and not being uh ones to go again uh, 
fight against our neighbors. We were watching, Sister Lynette and I was watching Judge Judy. She loves Judge Judy. How many of y'all love Judge? I don't. But she was watching Judge Judy, and Judge Judy was trying a case. The lady had uh, her, her land, and the man next door had his, and his horses were coming over into her land and messed up her swimming pool. So Dr. Jones, watch out for your pool because your neighbors with them horses, they're going to come over, messed up her pool. And, and uh, Judge Judy sided with the man that had the horses. And I had a problem with that because the horses went over into her land. But then when I found out all the particulars behind it, I kind of understood where she was coming from. The fence fell down and the, the, the lady that had the horse, her fence fell down. It was her fault. She didn't fix it right. The fence fell down. So the horse came over into her property and because the fence fell down, it was a fence that she rebuilt. The owner of the house next door had built a fence, but she didn't like it. She wanted something more modern, da 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 da. And when it fell, uh, Judge Judy said, Well, you changed the fence. And the fence, the old fence, may have worked properly before you even moved there. So by tearing it down and not fixing it, it opened up the door for the horses to run into your yard and mess up. Of course, the lady didn't agree with that, but I, I came around. It took me a while. But what I'm saying is that there's some things, there are rules out there. Jones, fix your, fix your fence, I'm telling you. Yeah, that that you got know, to keep those neighbors animals out of your yard and stop, won't mess them up. But the law, that, that law, that lady didn't, she checked her ordinances, the one that don't, had the pool. She checked her ordinances. By the ordinances, she felt that she was right. To George, Judge Judy threw a stone that was not written in their community ordinance, yeah. which couldn't override it. So there are some things that, you know, they override each other. But the, just all that to say is, yes, the, the rules, all rules aren't written. But sometimes people don't have to write something for you to know whether it's right or wrong. That, that'd be my point there. But anybody else, didn't mean to cut anyone off. Anybody else? George is staring. George, what do you, come on. You I wanted, go ahead. I wanted to um, say that I, I think the simplicity of the commandments um, were necessary because what people try to do is their interpretation of it. Um, it, it with it being concise, there's no room for error or, or misinterpretation. And, and even, you know, in the system that we're in now, in this, this place and time, it's all about self-expression and there are exceptions to this and exceptions to that. And, and so we're, we try to rationalize more, but the commandments are exact. So I think we need to have that so that we don't um, cause or, or our personal influences will validate our bad behavior. No, very good point. Very good point because you're right that that there are rules out there now and, and it, it's in it under the interpretation of the reader uh, because they're vague. Trump played with that vagueness. I mean, he he says not written there. That's not what they meant. They don't know what they meant back in there. We can't then bring that up. So all those things, those things are very true. But where it says thou shall not, he laid it out. He said still. He didn't add comma. Do he didn't add a whole lot of stuff say, and and whatever else and etc and all that stuff etc cetera, etc. Cetera. He put it down to to those areas. And man, I sit there and still play with that. So man, you know we because we have our, our ways of doing things, we'll try to rationalize the last things the way we want. But I'm so grateful that the Lord, uh, He's a forgiving God. And as Elder stated earlier, uh, these are parameters for us to, to check ourselves. And when we feel, if you, you know when you're feeling condemned behind doing, you should. There should be something tugging on you to let you know, eh, you know, and then it helps you get back in line. Um, but, it, you know, it's, it's a guide. But uh, thank you for that. You're, you're very well uh, put. Anyone, anyone else? Nothing else that you receive out of the ten when you see those ten commandments. Piggyback just quickly on what Sister Rosalind was just saying. I put something in the chat. Um, all politicians play around with policies. That's why they're called policies. Uh, the politicians, when it comes to the law, they're stuck because it's the law, and the ten commandments are not policies; they're laws, and so it's not. Uh, you can't play around with them. 
uh, yeah. that you can't right. interpret them the way you want. Like Sister Rosalind was saying, it, they, they're exact. And uh, yeah, we're not here to be Pharisees <laughs> and, and be, be political, uh, spiritual politicians like they were um, and hypocrites. We, we, we are here to obey. No, true statement, definitely. Um, and, and then the fallacy comes that we still try to change them. We try to amend. We try to say that's not what they meant. But these are true. These are what this is what he said. He start, started off with the first verse, telling us <laughs> he's speaking to him. So you're right, and uh, on both ends, both the on on those points. Any anyone else? Don't want to cut anyone off. We're going to go deeper into uh, these commandments a little bit, just to uh, um, just to to bring it back. I think many times what happens in our life is that we see we've we've had the commandments out there for years, and we don't go back and revisit some of the things that uh, we we should be looking at as we make sure our lives are uh, in line with what God has called us. Um, uh, uh, I like what Elder stated earlier about uh, do that safety check on ourselves. And um, Pastor Heath used to always tell us, consider your ways. And so we sometimes lose sight of the, you said it's simplicity, the things that he made very simple uh, in our everyday life. Um, there were leaders even in those days that were doing things. Moses killed somebody. So you can see where killing was still a common thing in, in those days. And how even if you go back again and see how Joseph's brothers, they didn't kill him, but they might as well killed him for what they were, you know, put him in selling him and all those things, how we treated each other and things of that nature. And um, but it, it, it was the way that they lived in those days and uh, not so much doing things like that to your brother, but people just imagine some your brother selling you uh for the highest bidder and uh, and how we treat one they were treating one another and it's just it's it still happens today look what we're going look at the world today how people are uh, life is 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 like nobody cares about a life people take and and even going beyond it what did all those sins how did it affect the world that we live in today how does it affect people because of the mentality you know even mental illness today all this is coming from sin is what it boils down to really uh that that we're looking and we're talking about and you can put it in classifications that you, you choose but that's that's uh what we, we want to just really focus on uh, how these things came to be that he was made, trying to put them in a position to receive the gifts that he had already promised them things that that were necessary as they go into the promised land sin we're not going to make heaven if we don't get our lives right and uh it's, it's going to extend beyond these 10 but these 10 are just the basics that that he had because you still gonna have to you got to live right you got to praise him you got to worship him you got to give him all put him as number one uno he's a jealous god my god he's a jealous god and he's not taking second fiddle to nobody. And we got to remember that. But so before we close, we got 10 minutes. Don't want to hold nobody up. We're going to close out, go ahead and out, make the announcements. But anyone that has anything additional, um, please make yourself known at this time. I want to say one more thing. I think even, even something more, more simple is that it, you're either in God's will or you're not. And those 10 commandments are God's will. They are God's will. Uh, yeah. What I love about him is he still gives us an opportunity to get in his way. He don't, mm -hmm. He's a forgiving God. As um, long as he's a figure, that don't mean you just can't, well, keep breaking the law. <laughs> there are penalties, consequences, let's use that word, for not being obedient to the Lord. It's flat out. Um, there are some consequences that we will pay. and um, But he is a forgiving God. He always gives us beyond first and second chance it's not like a baseball game you get you know there's no three strikes and all of that then hey great none of that plays into this and there's no first quarter second quarter none of that game stuff god is for real he continues all he wants is that repentant heart and that one that says i want to get it right and yeah, sometimes it's when we get to our lowest point we don't have to get there but sometimes that's what brings us back to a point where we realize that if it had not been for the lord on my side and then you would know where you would be if it hadn't been for jesus so we're just thankful that he is such an awesome god and he gives us opportunity after opportunity 
um, to continue to get it right. Sister Rosalind, you are, you are in the sales. One of the great sales uh, uh, young men that uh, motivated you know, speakers, he always talked about his alarm clock being uh, his clock for uh, an opportunity. He, he would set the alarm clock in the morning. Most people would slam it down, cut it off because it goes off at five. But he, when he heard it go off at five, he said, this is an opportunity for me to do something, something to help me make some. That's what he was doing the money. He was looking to get himself ready for his uh, clients the next day and things of that nature. Um, so we, it, it's, it's, it's there for us and we have to look at opportunities, even in our outreach, our evangelism, our lifestyles, everything that we do, God has given us opportunity after opportunity to get things uh, to help in, in building in the kingdom of God, because that's we're here to, to do that. He created us for a purpose. So, all right. Uh, any others? And if not, we'll move right into our announcements. Don't want to. I appreciate all the feedback. We're going to still talk about these commandments a little bit more as we go through. Elder George, announcements, please. Praise the Lord to everyone again. Uh, announcements for this evening. We'll uh, receive our offering for tonight and our ways for giving are on the screen. Um, and we always appreciate everyone for uh, giving and supporting the ministry. You can give through Cash App, through Givelify, through the website. Or as always, you can mail in your check or your money order. And again, we pray God's blessings as you continue to go uh, to give and bless uh, the ministry. Uh, we will continue in prayer each night this week. Tomorrow will be last names beginning in K through O. Friday will be last names beginning in P through T. And Saturday will be last names beginning in U through Z in prayer from 7 to 730. And we'll return for worship on Sunday with Little Ones for Christ at 1015 our Christian education for adults and young adults at 11, and our service at 12 noon. 